Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, in my mystery box of cheap untested graphics cards, two particularly interesting finds were the AMD R7 260X and the GTX 780, or part of one anyway. When going through the box, I thought I had found two appropriate fans for the 780, but if you look closely at this frame here, these two fans are completely different and we only had one MSI Twin Frozer fan included. I didn't notice this at the time somehow, but thankfully I've been holding onto another broken card that has kindly volunteered to sacrifice itself for R780's benefit. I've also got some news on the R7260X as well, which despite my best efforts has succumbed to its faults. When I first tested it, there were on-screen artifacts and installing any drivers caused the PC to restart. I managed to revive it momentarily, but it died shortly after a long GTA 5 gaming session. Looks like the focus is on the other best in the box card then. So, all we need to do is swap the fans from the dead AMD card to the 780. I'll probably swap them back at some point to try and revive the R9, but for now, let's see if this thing works. Removing the fans is pretty simple, but quite fiddly, and what doesn't help is that my fingers are full of pinholes from my guest appearance on my sister's channel. She challenged me to make my own merch, and I probably sewed more of my hands to the material than cotton, but I'll leave a link to that in the description if you want to watch. So, with my fingers burning already, I began removing the three screws that hold each fan in place. You might be wondering why I don't just swap the coolers over, and to be honest, I... Um, wait, I don't actually know why I didn't swap the coolers over. <laughs> okay, seriously, the uh, 780's heatsink is a bit beefier, so I figured that we may as well keep that on the card that it was intended for. The next step involves removing the plastic part from the metal heatsink itself, which is again held on by screws, this time four in total. I could have probably still checked that this card booted without the fans, but doing it this way means that if it works, we can continue straight on with our gaming tests. Basically the lazy way. I'm getting the hard work out of the way first, basically. <laughs> Luckily, the fans can be straight swapped here, so once they've been removed from the R9 270, they can be installed on the 780 without any issues. It can be pretty fiddly though, as I said before, but it's just a matter of feeding the cable back through this card and plugging in the header before putting it back together and screwing the fans down. I'll skip ahead to the final outcome. The GTX 780 looks good as new, but will it work? Or will it need a visit from Mr. Heat Gun? Well, it took a couple of attempts, but eventually we got a display and I was able to jump straight into my games collection. Now embarrassingly, I thought that the card was broken because I got a totally blank screen on the first couple of boots, but it turns out that the HDMI and display ports are broken. I had to use an HDMI cable with a DVI adapter in order to get a picture. It's a small price to pay in the long run, but there might not be a long run if the other port fails. I'm not sure why the other ports don't work, but it might have been a part of a system that either blew its power supply or the card itself could be liquid damaged. I mean, it could be anything, but as long as the DVI port works, then I'm not too concerned for now. So gaming wise, the GTX 780 is going to be a mixed bag in 2021. On one hand, it's going to make light work of some titles, especially if paired with a decent processor, like here with Crisis Remastered. You'll have no trouble exceeding 30 or 60 frames per second at low settings, which admittedly still look good. Those big spikes in the frame time counter on the left of the screen indicate stutter, which was certainly noticeable here and there. The three gigabytes of VRAM probably doesn't help. On the other hand, you've got games like Cyberpunk 2077, which will ensure that the 780 suffers even at low settings, though we are still using Full HD or 1080p here, which isn't ideal for this big open world game. Either dropping the resolution scaling or selecting a lower native option would be better. So, on to a few more games. These tests were mainly just to check out the stability, if nothing else, though it's always nice to see how older cards are holding up. I overestimated Fortnite's intensiveness 
on this system, that's for sure. And I went with the low DirectX settings. Now we could have gone even lower with the performance API, but I decided that DirectX 11 would still probably be low enough. And as you can see, we were getting a pretty decent frame rate in this part of the map. Now the frame rate will differ depending on where you are, but this is sort of a best case scenario, I guess. Um, the frame rate's probably gonna stay over 100 in most places with these settings because everything is turned right down. The resolution scaling is at 100% though. So yeah, it looks pretty good, but turning the settings down this low wasn't really necessary. GTA 5 will still run very well on a 780 as well. The game is a few years old now and generally works quite well with most mid-range cards of a similar age. So it's no surprise then that a 780, a GPU that was considered more of a performance option back in the day, runs this game fine with high slash very high settings. All of the bars as well were set to maximum like population density, population variety, things like that. But the advanced settings such as long shadows were all turned off and so was MSAA, though FXAA was on. Finally then, it's Watch Dogs Legion. Now this is quite a demanding game, but more so toward the processor side of things. Here though, because we are using the 780, this does prove to be the limiting factor. Though saying that, and we are getting at least 40 frames per second, even in some of the busier parts of Ubisoft's Recreation of London. So it's not really all that bad to be honest. I'm surprised this card works though. I thought it would need the heat gun treatment and I thought if that worked then the card might work for a couple of days at best. But we'll have to see how it goes because how long it will work is always the question when it comes to these uh, cards that have been listed as untested or faulty in the first place. Considering all the ports or almost all of the ports on this thing are dead already its lifespan will be interesting to gauge, but maybe we'll have this one for a good few months or even years, though by then it's probably not going to be able to run many new games at all. As always then, thank you very much for watching. It's a bit of bad news in terms of the R7 260X. Unfortunately, that card is no more. I bought another 40 card as well on eBay, which unfortunately I haven't been able to test properly because I tested it with a cheap PSU which was a bad move and that sort of blew up so I'm sure I'll make a video about that this week at some point just to let you know what happened there. The 780 though well for now seems to be working the fan swap went well and I edited this video with the card in the system too so I guess it was just a case of the fans coming away or going missing from the card itself maybe the previous owner bought it like this but who knows anyway Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully, I'll see all of you in the next one.